Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Welcome, everybody, to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Kennedy. I'm Mike Delisio. And I'm excited for this. <laughs> You're excited because it's the last one of the week, and we've just done nine more <laughs> of them in a row. I'm the one who suggested that we do the top ten as ten individual lists. <laughs> Each one approximately an hour and night and thirty minutes long. We're, We're gonna make play this last one of the games all year. Yeah. <laughs> cause because we've talked about five hundred games or we've done four hundred and sixty so uh, four hundred and fifty so far. So huh. I am curious how many different games there are total. Yeah. Though. I'd like mm. to find out the individual, the the number of unique games that we discussed on. If this only list. we were doing a stats video. Oh, That's right. true. <laughs> Come back Sunday, folks. I'll be doing a stats video, taking a look at some of the stats from this. And for those mathematicians of you, come back and join us. Uh, Crassio says that Thomas statistically, that's me, been the voice of the people since 2011, but Roy is attacking the title, and will we have a new voice of the people? Really? Wow. Look at that, Roy. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I thought uh -huh. it was more like an honorary title that I had, not really a factual one. <laughs> Let's be honest. Somebody, somebody, the people. somebody years ago said I was the voice of the people. I don't know why it stuck, but it stuck. Mm. It stuck. Oh, the song. The, the song, song, too, yeah. <laughs> no, come on. The song came after the thing. Now, I'm, now, the, the song made it. No? It's a circular thing. Okay. The yeah, song I think it was the thing. chicken first. <laughs> then the egg. Also, then the moon. Miller and Uncle Loy says, "What's up?" Or hey, what thanks, up? Uncle. What's Sorry. up? What up? <laughs> Uncle wow. Loy. Uncle Loy is checking this out. Ooh Let's get started here. We got <laughs> ten great games. Probably not so many super surprises here. Or is there... we'll find out now. Okay, number 10 for me was 17 last year, so it moved up. I really do enjoy this game. It is a Euro game through and through, although you wouldn't know that looking at the cover and the miniatures inside. And this is Vindication. Oh, I, top this, 10! Top oh. Vindication just growing for me. I And that's without the newest expansion, which, is, well, that was just kickstarted, so I wouldn't know what it was in it, but... You know what? I just really like sandbox games. And that's straight up. This is a sandbox Euro. Go around. Find different people. Fight monsters. Search for treasure. Do this. Do that. Get cubes. Yeah, it's all very straightforward, but I really like it. I like the art. I like it just feels different than most other games. So a lot of fun for me. Yeah. Chris, put this one on the official list. I need to play this game, Tom. You promised you would teach me it. You've been... Really putting me off. If let's be honest, here, <laughs> you've been putting me off. It's like, well, you see, I'm like, no. Before you can even say the name of the game, you said there were miniatures, but then you said it was Euro through and through, and then I had to be like, ah. Oh. Yes, Roy, that's true. <laughs> there are miniatures in this game. They are in there solely for looks. Mm -hmm. No other reason. You don't even use most of them in the base game. <laughs> They're there for like the different modules and stuff. I, this might be a controversial take, but I, I'm going to go ahead and say that miniatures in any game are there for looks. And they look awesome. Yeah. Fine. What I mean, is you don't actually even pull them out of the box most of the time. <laughs> oh, then oh, wow. they're, oh, wow. Except the Yeah, well, like, okay, I... like, it might be in the middle of the board to show you where the one, somebody is on the board or something like that. They're, they're just not used that much Got because it. they're... Or, well, you can buy, I think, a version without them anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. How did this make your top ten with the useless minis like that? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Game is that good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number ten. I think it may be the five-way crossover. 
I think this has been on everyone else's list, including the people. It was my number 10 in 2017. It was my number 10 last year. It is also my number 10 this year. This is Blood Rage. It has Blood not, Puddle! It has not been on the people. Oh. It wasn't on the people's? Oh, snap. It's going to be on the people's then. Anyway, five-way cross. <laughs> um, Four-way. <laughs> Don't get excited. Blood Rage is an awesome game where you are drafting cards and you're trying to like put this plan together so that way you can implement it on the board in front of you. I mean, all the other players are doing all sorts of different stuff and you have to try to figure out how to min-max... Oh, goodness, I said it unironically. Yes. I mean, you have to min-max <laughs> your special <laughs> abilities <laughs> to figure out a way to put all that stuff together to like eke out the, the amount of glory you need to win. I really enjoy the fact that this has a Loki strategy so that sometimes dying is just as good as... As winning in combat you can try to steal rage from other people you can try to like destroy your boats and get tons of glory that way this game is amazing and fun mm. and i heard there may be more content coming for this game so it may creep up even higher on my list I no really he enjoyed... said it's not a secret eric mm. lang tweeted that he was working on another expansion for it sure. yes oh, i want to draft Speaking more cards it was a private tweet Let's... Let's draft Dude. more cards. <laughs> I, I love Blood Rage. This game is, is a blast. It is a ton of fun. I think that's what the game needs is more cards, don't you? It like does. I do draft. think it does. I have played this game yes. a massive amount of times, and all I really want is more cards. So, I think what it should be, in my humble opinion, opinion ain't humble. Re replacement deck. Keep all the minis. Replacement yeah. deck. Alternate powers for everything. Sure. Yeah, oh, like yeah. just a new deck. You Take out the old deck, a stage is one, two, and three. Whole new deck. Figure it out from the beginning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't don't even Pull act like they're not gonna be like millions of, of new miniatures. There's gonna okay. be millions of new miniatures. Don't even act like no, that. No, why would they do that? Because money! Oh, right. <laughs> you're right. Oh. Okay, new idea. Every card is actually a miniature card. It's 3D <laughs> printed, like you plastic. draft the miniatures. Mike, I need you to go. <laughs> All right, I'll go. No, I meant leave. Home. Okay. <laughs> taxi! What's a taxi? Come on, like boomer. Did I just, uh, yeah, did I just age myself? Well, certainly you would never know my age surrounded by these three gentlemen. So my number 10, actually, I shouldn't put Z in there. Z is always kind to me. Z, you're Thank kind you. to me. Tom I, and Roy I, like to. If I like rib to, you, then you know yes. it comes from a place of, of clear love. I hope it does. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just Z's disses are so highbrow, they go over your head and you don't get them. Oh. Also, I'm old. My number 10 <laughs> is a brand new game, Cult of the New. My number 10 is a crossover with Roy Kennedy, I believe, and maybe also Tom Vassell. I maybe Z Garcia. I didn't talk about this game. Was, oh, Roy doesn't know about this game. There's a really cool game, Roy. It's called Dune Imperium. Dune Whoa. Imperium. It, yes, my number this is 10. Top 10. 10, baby. 10. You are yes. such a cult of the new player. Cult of the new. I love my I knew new this game. was going to be here for Mike. Wow. Yeah, no, this, this is a game that really, honestly, I saw it. I did the unboxing for it. And I was like, <sighs> didn't look that great. Yeah. Read the rules. Thought, Didn't sound that great. Played the game. Wasn't that great. God, but read you know, this game popular is... opinion, and suddenly it was great. Great. I, I thought this game was garbage, <laughs> and then I started hearing people praise it, and I thought, you know what? I better get in on this Dune Imperium action. Mm -hmm. a no, it's a really... <laughs> get on it. <laughs> it's great. Deck builder. I love the fact that your cards can also be... Uh, places that you can go onto the board. It is one of the most interactive Euro games I've ever played. Just incredible tension. Every single turn, someone's doing something you don't want them to do. You're worried about what other people are doing when it's not your turn. You're worried about what you're doing when it is your turn. It is just uh, a fantastic... Just no, no. It is a, a fantastic, fantastic game. Dune Imperium is one that I think is going to be very, very popular as more people play. I agree. It's really. on the people's choice next year. Hands down. For sure. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, yeah. Did, did you pre-order that deluxe deluxe upgrade yet, Mike? 
Not yet, but it's going to be happening. Mm. I've been I, wanting to play this thing with two players with that whole app assisted deal. Mm-hmm. I, yep. I, I, I got to get that checked out. I want to see that. Yeah. Thanks, Vanessa, for becoming a member. And especially big thanks to Mom Gamer, who says, Ooh. thank you for all your hardworking, wonderful content and a new color super chat I've not seen before. <gasps> what color is it? Describe it to me. It's like pink and <laughs> describe it to you. Well, it's kind of like red, but not uh, as dark. Uh, so the, imagine white and uh-huh. red, and this is somewhere in between. I feel like we're playing hues and cues. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm ready for even even brighter colors. Thank mm. you, Mom Gamer. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. What you got, Z? And Paul Souza. Thank you, Paul Souza. All righty. What have if, I got if, here? My number. We'll never get to Z. So I appreciate that. <laughs> My number. That's great. Yeah. Anybody else want to delay me talking about some <laughs> some boring old games I keep mentioning? My number 10 is a miniatures game for two players only in its latest iteration. This is Claustrophobia 1643. One of my favorite games based around minis, based around a few things I've mentioned. Exploration, not knowing what's around the next corner when you flip that tile over. Love it. And this one has these enormous tiles. Uh, combat, but clean, mechanically driven combat that puts emphasis on not just what's going to happen, but what you can sort of will into being. Choices you make along the way. This is very asymmetrical. I know that's been uh, Mike's word during this top 100, but I like to use it every now and then as well. Mm-hmm. And I love the way both sides feel in this game. Being the, I hesitate to use the word heroes, but being the non-demon players <laughs> uh, going into this uh, these tunnels under the earth, trying to keep you people alive, assigning them actions, seeing their possibilities for actions dwindling. Ooh, that's, that's some nail-biting tension. And then the other side is equally fun and enjoyable. You have an, an a limitless amount of troglodytes to just keep throwing at these people and hope to destroy them. You got demons. You got crazy hellhounds. I mean, this game is bananas, and I love it. Claustrophobia uh, 1643 is my number 10. All right. Steve says he wants to delay Z a bit more. Hail from Canada. And Meeple Mania says Dune, Imperium, and Lost Ruins Varnak are among the best games of the year. And Mike Rules or something like that. That's not important. Wow. Mike Thank Rules. Mm, very kind of you. Thank you. All right. Well, guess what? I was wrong. I said there would be no five-way crossover. And there is. The people agree with Roy. Blood Rage at number 10 <laughs> for the people. <laughs> same, same number. number. <laughs> it actually I'm, dropped down from number five, though. I'm just saying. Just to I feel like match with Roy. Yeah. <laughs> I talked to all the people. Oh, we made oh, sure to collaborate up? on making sure it was number 10. Straight profit. I have to say, this is not the one game I expected to... I think there might be two games that we have a five-way crossover. This was not the one I would have expected it from. Mostly, I don't like it. Yeah, but I, I sense it falling off Z's list at some point in the, in the future. In Does life, have it higher than yours. Yeah, but I'm more of a consistent cat. <laughs> consistent cat. Look at that. Consistent cat. Look at this cat. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe I suppose it could, but no, I like it. I like it plenty. I, I could see it slipping. You know, the cat was in my office this morning here for like a half hour this morning, mm-hmm. just sitting there asking for food. That's right. Did you? Did, you mm-hmm. oh. did it get that food? Anyway, uh, the ne- <laughs> Juan. Juan says, thanks for all the daily chats. You like the one with Corey Thompson and Ian O'Toole. Nice. nice. Juan Pablo Giraldo. Mm, muy bien. Uh, just have Z read these. Thank you. No, only if the name is, is from uh, the <laughs> Spanish papers. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, my number nine. I'm back on the Rosenberg train. This was 14 last year, so it broke into my top 10 also. Feast for Odin. Whoa. I do game. I, it is worker placement. 
It is polyominoes. Um, it is choices galore. I, I do like a lot of choices. Yes, that means that the number of people I want to play the game with is pretty small because you can't be in a, an animal. You can't have AP at all. <laughs> the yeah, word just sure. went out my head there briefly. Um, but, ah, oh, so juicy, and I don't think you'll ever play it the same way twice. There's just so many different possibilities. And I like the different routes that you can go down to. And the expansion is very good. I really enjoy this game. I just keep coming back to it. This is the fifth year on my list. It started at 94 and has worked its way all the way up to nine. Will it still be there next year? I don't know, but I'm enjoying it now. A feast for Odin. And I didn't know this was going to be in your top 10. For some reason, Tom, I thought you liked Caverna over a feast for Odin. So I'm I'm excited that uh, that you like it this much. Last year, Caverna was 16 and feast for Odin was 14. They've spread a part of it at nine and 20 now, but also Mm -hmm. that's, so small, it doesn't really matter. Um, sure. But yeah, if I if I think I play Kevin more because more pe- I'm willing to play it with more people, but I like Feast better. Got it. Also, Pete says I was rude to Z, and Marco said greeting from the heated dice fists from Germany. Hmm. Thanks. Hmm. Heated dice fists. My number nine. Sounds like something we look at on. Sounds like something we look at on crowd surfing. (laughs) My number nine is my favorite hidden movement game, and this is basically based in a futuristic world where you're trying to fight the (gasps) agents of Raxon, and this is Specter Ops. I love Specter Ops. Yes. I love exploring this game and like as the um, agent, you're trying to sneak in and get around all of these hunters and figure out ways to basically fulfill your objectives and get to the different spots that you need to. And as hunters, you're trying to work together and find out where it is. I basically think it, it takes the hidden movement game and adds all these cool special powers into it that I just really enjoy, but it's still actually pretty simple to play overall. I enjoy how all the characters are very different and dynamic amongst each other, and I just really enjoy this hidden movement game from Emerson Matsuchi. That is Spectre Ops. If you haven't played it, you should try it. Indeed. Roy, if someone's going to get Spectre Ops, should they get, which one should they get, or does it matter? Honestly, I would go with the first version of the game. Um, the second version adds a little bit of extra stuff to it, so you can like start to pick up items and do different stuff like that, and it adds a little bit more complex special abilities. I would probably go with the first one first, and there's a little bit of a weird, interesting thing with the second version with board numbers being off, but I still really enjoy both of them. So if you're super into the game, get both, but I'd say start with the first one. There's not uh, a lot of games like this made these days, huh? I don't know when why. The last time, when was the last time they made a big, splashy hidden movement game? There's one coming out in 2021. Yeah, I was going to say, there's oh. one coming out that we played that we liked a lot. Yeah. What? You guys I are like so competitive. That one. All right. Felipe is a new member. Thank you. And Mr. Dreadful said he made a game called Thor's Grubhub Order. Uh, incidentally, we might be playing the DoorDash game live tomorrow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Look, really? Mike, I promise as soon as we realize it's bad, we'll stop playing. Which technically what is the, means... Wait, is this a real thing? Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> it's, and it's and it looks amazingly bad. I, I think it's yeah. called Super Yum. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sewer, no. door, sewer Dash. All right. Yeah. Mike, you what do you this. got? All right. My number nine is a game that I call a hidden gem. It actually has risen quite a bit. It was 25 last year, and it's broken into the top 10. It is Outlive. This is a post-apocalyptic-themed worker placement game. And we've talked quite a bit uh, through these lists about Fallout Shelter, the board game, which I like quite a bit. It didn't quite make my top 100, but it's a really good game. This basically has a similar theme, where you are in an underground bunker... And at the beginning of the game, you get rooms that give you some special powers, all of which you want to be active. But to have those rooms be active, you have to have survivors and you have to go out and find these survivors. And if you've got these survivors, you've got to feed them and you've got to make sure that the air is purified. And so you are going out on worker placement. You've got workers that have different values on them, numerical values. And basically what they do is they give you a strength of whatever action you're going to take. So If you're going at a place that's going to get you some water, if you go there with a stronger worker, you'll get more water. 
The other thing that those numbers will do is that they have some interaction between players because if you have a larger number than somebody else who's at that spot, you can kind of take stuff from them, which is you don't find that a lot in Euro games. So it's a pretty interactive Euro game. I absolutely adore Outlive. I don't know why it's not more popular. At Last time I checked, you can still get it readily and it was relatively inexpensive. A really nice production. I like the art by... Um, I don't want to say who it's by because I, I think it's Miguel Coimbra. I think, it but is. I'm not possible. It Miguel is. Miguel Coimbra and Michael Jenkins. Yeah. I just know yeah, that so I, off the top of my head. You're definitely not looking <laughs> it up right now. But I think, yeah, I think the look of the game is good. I think the, the components are good. The the uh, I like worker placement games. Check out Outlive if you haven't already. Well, the reason I'm looking this up is because I, I know I've played this. I played this with Tom. I was like, I yeah. don't mm-hmm. remember... I don't remember being particularly, you know, fascinated by it. I you rated liked it, a, it, huh? I thought you liked it. I rated it a six, so I have it here at a six. Ooh. That's not that's not dislike, right? That's mm-hmm. uh, that's an okay game, slightly above average. Uh, but everything Mike is saying is making me feel like I should really like this game. <laughs> yeah, it's so artistic. It's just been a while, yeah. But like the right. worker placement, workers associated with action strengths. Mm-hmm. The, uh, Maybe you don't I like mean, the meanness of it because there is some meanness to it. There Are you kidding me, fool? I love to be mean. I know. Maybe, I can read maybe, all your emails. Maybe it's who you're playing you can it with. Mitig- you know, and also you can mitigate the meanness. Ba- basically, there's a resource that allows that keeps you from getting stuff taken from you. So if you don't, it's not a lot of take that. There's a an element, but it's good, really good. I gotta try this again, Mike. Yeah, I mean, not like again. Patch Up Palooza. I'm just gonna try it. Right. Um, and it is right now. It's rank. It's overall rank on BGG six six six. Oh. All right. Yeah, on that note, that. it's welcome new members: Sebastian Bronfen and Matt Covington. Welcome. Also, Renzo says greetings from Peru. Nice. I'm going to have a Peruvian for dinner. Oh, nice. No, probably not, but I'm in the mood for it. All right, guys, my number nine is a game we talked about a few hours ago. Came up in conversation. (laughs) And this is a game I like even better than the original. I do think it's a better uh, game. Seven Wonders Duel. Seven Wonders Duel is a fantastic two-player game tug of war style game with a nice amount of diverging paths and it's the kind of game that you do want to tom uh, uh, i'm sorry uh, mike said it earlier in a game it's a game that where at some point you need to do that pivot in almost every game i've played of this there is a point in which you need to pivot mm-hmm. you see your opponent is, is really not <laughs> looking out for their military strength so pivot into it and put some pressure on them that way. You might be able to end the game early with just a blowout military victory. Oh, that's that, you know, they're kind of pushing back on you there. Okay, well, shore up your defenses, but pivot. Start collecting these other symbols. And if you get a run of them, you can win the game. It's so cool. I love the way that works. I love the the tension between if I take a card. I am revealing new possibilities to my opponent. So every choice is you're helping yourself and and hurting yourself with every choice in this game. I love that about it. Seven Wonders Duel is a fantastic two-player game. You've got to get your hands on this one. Number nine, probably going to be number two next year. Call it. It is so good. Wow. No, no, no. No, my number two is really good. (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) Now I'm going in to check. It was your number 13 last year, so it is, but it was your four once. So, mm. Mm. fickle, fickle Z. I'm, uh, I'm, ben so, McGuire, I'm so fickle, yeah. <laughs> ben McGuire is a new member. Paul says, How many times do you all play a game before you rate it on average? My answer is always the same enough. Mm-hmm. All right, People's Choice. This number nine was number one four years in a row. Oh, come on, you, you should have waited until I was drinking to do a spit take. Oh, hang on. <laughs> this number nine was actually number... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's been on the list since the very beginning, debuted at six, has never left the top ten, and that is Pandemic. Hmm. 
Whoa. I like that game. I heard you do. I heard you do. Will it is a lot a lot of fun. In my top 100? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's gone entirely. We, are, we, we definitely, we, we're all working for M. Night Shyamalan on his next movie with our surprises. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Pandemic, people's choice. All right, we have a quick shout out from Second Stone from British Columbia. Big shout out to Morgan and Chris from Oregon. We met at Dice Tower West 2018. Too bad we can't be there all next month. I agree. Mm, yes. Yeah. All right, my number eight. It's my highest new entry to the list, debuting at number eight. Ooh. This was my favorite game from last year. Certainly one of my most played games. I like it a lot. The Crew. The crew wow. just works for me. But hey, you know what? It, it's not just a me thing. It was really high in the people's choice, too. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You are you are the voice of the people. What I like about this game is I like that I'm able to play it with people who only like trick-taking games. And that subgenre of, of gamers exists. There's a lot of them. Um, mm-hmm. But it also plays pretty well with people who like just cooperative games that combo is there and because this whole new limited communication thing is really big i think that helps too those three things combine and then of course there's 50 missions that makes the game it's not the same game every time you're basically just adding in different victory conditions i really like it um so that's my number eight the crew all right Quick shout out to Corey Clark, who backed the Dice Tower Kickstarter. Thank you. And he says, in all seriousness, this channel has helped a lot with my mental health during COVID. Good. Clay's wants to know, is Zaya still Roy's number five? But we're not at number five, so I want to know what Roy's number eight is. Is it Zaya? Mm -hmm. Um, So my number eight is actually a crossover with Tom. He had it a little while back. And this is... One of my favorite games, it's two players only, and you just go head-to-head against your opponent with fantastic fantasy characters. This is Battlelore 2nd Edition. I really enjoy Battlelore. I just you said the name, Roy. There was a lot of games that fit that category. <laughs> I know, right, right. I really enjoy Battlelore. I love the way that this game sets up. You basically have two cards that make up the board, and you put the board out. It also shows you the areas that you can deploy in, and you put all of these cards out face down, deploying your areas. First, before that, you get to even recruit an army, so it feels very like miniature style as you recruit these armies with very simple point values and you pick which guys you're going to have out there your opponent doesn't even know which characters you're using you flip them all out there and flip them face up and you deploy your guys all over the board and it's very like memoir 44 style commanding colors as you're trying to figure out which flanks you're going to play on which turns you also have lore cards that are like magical special abilities that can mix things up i just love this magical fantastical game with all these giant monsters and and knights and and demons that are all fighting against each other i also really enjoy the undead of this game so lots of skeleton shooting bows at your opponents um this is just like the kind of fantasy game that I really enjoy, and that is Battle Lore Second Edition. Give us another expansion fantasy play. And if Stop they came making... out with elves, like they said elves was like done and they were gonna do it, but then they made Rune Wars and then like scrapped this whole game, which makes me depressed because this well, game is so Boy, good. you put Rune Wars on your top one hundred. If you would stop nonsense like that, we'd have more battle lore. They canceled Rune Wars um, so they can bring Battle Lore back. Bring Battle Lore back. Yeah, but now you put it on your top 100, so they're bringing Rune Wars back. That's it. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is I never could find anybody to play that game with. I found tons of people to play this one with. All right. Awesome. By the way, my uh, Roy, people are saying your mic's a little low, so you might want to either I pick up the gain a little up. bit or just Okay, just as so people know, I'm going to pull back the curtain here. The person who runs Ecamm, which in this yes. case, or our streaming software, is Roy. And it is really difficult to make that person's microphone the perfect level. Right. Especially if they move around a lot. Pick it in between theirs and mine. And like, who do I go up and who do I go down? But yeah, I adjusted a little bit. And good news, Bad Saturn 3 joined as a new member. Oh, sorry about your poor poor choices of cars. And uh, Yogi Bear says, fix your mic, Roy. But we 
beat him. Oh, and Daniel says, <laughs> man, we got a lot of these. Daniel says Z's number two is Trotofont. <laughs> it is uh, my number one year for a worldwide pandemic. Yeah, number one game mm. for, for that year, absolutely. <laughs> Hurry, now. Mike, go! My number eight is a game that has crossed over with at least somebody. I'm giving up trying to remember who did yeah. what, but it crossed over <laughs> with somebody. It's me. This, it, it definitely, well, it may have been you, Z, but I'm not sure. Five Tribes is my number eight. Boy, That's the do people. I love Five Tribes. The people, Okay. And the interesting thing to me, anyway, is that the biggest complaint that I hear about Five Tribes is the main reason that I like it. I've already mentioned on one of these uh, videos that I am much more of a tactical gamer than I am a strategic gamer. I like each turn being a new puzzle, and that's what Five Tribes is to me. Every time it's my turn, I feel like I've got a new puzzle to uh, kind of solve, and I really like that. I like the just the idea of... of taking a, a classic mechanism like Moncala and making it into so much more. I think it seamlessly integrates the set collection and the special powers with the genies. Uh, I, I think that Five Tribes is a, I've said this a few times, a modern classic. It feels like a game that will be played years and years and years from now. I love the tension that can come with bidding for turn order because you're bidding with points. Uh, the, the, the flow of this game is just so satisfying. I love the way the board looks at the beginning mm -hmm. and the way it looks at the end. So Five Tribes to me is a game that I see myself playing for years and years to come. Five Tribes. I, I got to try that. <laughs> All right, well, he's right. pretending he doesn't never heard of the game. Gaston says, also <laughs> greetings from the Heat at Dice Fist. Really curious about Z's number one. And Dr. Sammy says, I can't believe Codex moved from Tom's 90 to top 10. I know it didn't drop off. Introduce Roy to it. He'll love it. Roy mm. would indeed love it, but indeed it did drop off the top 100. Mm. I'm glad you want to know what my number one is, but uh, you're going to have to wait. The good news is no one waits like Gaston said, then <laughs> waits like Gaston. <laughs> mm -hmm. My word. Just what's your number, whatever number we're at? Eight. Eight. Eight, eight right? My number eight is Last Bastion. Somebody called it earlier uh, today in our previous top ten list that this would be coming up. And that this was the one that made it onto the list instead of Ghost Stories. Boy, this is a real toss-up, though. I love the theme of Ghost Stories. It's it's more interesting. It's more, uh, you know, outside of the realm of the usual themes for board games. But Last Bastion is considerably considerably streamlined from ghost stories um mm. the, the core okay the, the base game it's got more powers for the players more characters it's got uh a little a little easier of a time sort of managing what you should be doing and i think ultimately the game is at least with a full complement of four players a little bit easier you're you're a little closer to achieving, you know, a victory every now and then, which doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. I really like this one. Beautiful production, enjoyable co-op game, a great interaction between the players. Uh, you can, you know, meet up in the same place and share your tokens, collaborate. I really like this one. Last Bastion is a fantastic cooperative game. My number eight. Wow. All right. I didn't realize it had moved up that far. That's cool. Well, I mean, think of how high Ghost Stories has been for me. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, a, a, this is a swap. Well, let's look. Last year, Ghost Stories was not on your list because it was Last Bastion. And Last Bastion was 26. That's that's a pretty mm. good jump, though, in the yeah, top yeah, 10. Yeah, it is. And the year before that, Ghost Stories was 7. Oh, so never oh, mind. There you go. See? You're just wrong sometimes. Uh, like I said, sometimes. <laughs> All right, the People's Choice number eight was 11 last year, so it moved back into the top 10. This one has been as high as three and has been on the list for six years, and that is Viticulture. Viticulture, a uh, very popular game. Uh, I noticed that someone in the last one said, if I don't like to drink, would I still enjoy the game? And the answer to that is a resounding yes, as I am a complete sure. teetotaler, <laughs> and it's one of my favorite games. Um, but yeah, uh, this one, this is, 
Never mind. I was gonna say something and I'll, I'll save it for later. Oops. No, 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 no. Uh, okay. Oops. All right. Well, yeah. I, mean, it's the top I know what you're gonna say. Oh. You don't know what I was gonna say because I was gonna say an erroneous fact. So okay. he, he okay. so he does know. <laughs> <laughs> someone in someone in the uh, someone in the live chat of an earlier video reminded me that apparently I said apparently reminded me. That wings that I called that wingspan would be the people's choice number one this year. So I'm very interested to see if a I actually said that, and if if I did, that b if I was right. Sounds wow. like something I would say. Sounds like something I would say. <laughs> it does right. sound like something you would say, but you said a lot of stuff. Pete says he's still waiting to hear the bang the dice game. Pete, you may be, become a skeleton if you continue <laughs> to wait for that. You, well, we'll see. You never know. Oh, and Andre just says, "Hey, all right." <laughs> Let's go hang all the way up to number seven. All right, Mike. Uh, apparently you did say that. That's what people said. All right, my number seven right. is my last new entry into the top ten. This one was 18 last year. So popped in. It's been on my list for five years. The app really helped. I played the app a lot this year of this game, and that's Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars. Wow. Ah, you know what? I like engine building games. I've said that quite a few times over the course of this top 100. And Terraforming Mars has the biggest variety. But I've played it enough now that I actually know the a lot of the cards. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm looking for this card. I want this card specifically. Yeah. I just think it's fantastic. It's It does so much. I was about to say with so little, but that's not true. It does so much with so much. Um, but the, the combos and yeah, every game is different. And the fact that you have the prelude with it, where you start with a different uh, couple cards and a corporation. And, hmm, this is just crunchy goodness. Terraforming Mars, my number seven. Now, this is one I finally got to play with uh, you, Tom, right? I mean, I played online. We played, you know, electronic. Oh, yeah. We played it on the app in the mm -hmm. virtual time. That's right. It was it was so nice being able to play. It's a, it's not an occurrence that happens to me too much these days where I play a, a game I haven't played that's been out for years with people that really love it and know it and enjoy it. It was both welcoming but uh, quite a teaching experience. It was, it was great. <laughs> so that was that was fun. It was nice. Well, the good thing about an app is you don't ever get taught wrong. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I can't make a, you know, a rules mistake anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. My number seven is a brand new game to the list. And if you would have told me that I was going to have a worker placement game in my top ten, I would have thought you were crazy. But this is a game that Mike game. and Tom have both already talked about, and this is Dune Imperium. I love I Dune know. Imperium. Dune Imperium is a ton of fun to play. It's worker placement with deck building, but the deck building determines kind of the areas you can actually play the cards in. And then also, <laughs> <laughs> also you're trying to figure out how to gather spice, but it's all about racing to those 10 points. If you get to 10 points, you win the game, but there's a lot of interaction back and forth to the players. There's combat that you're fighting over, the, the desert there and trying to take over the planet, but it also strangely feels very thematic with all of the different special abilities and powers. And once you really know the Dune theme, you can really start to see how all of these spaces on the board correspond to different aspects of the Dune universe. And and fighting over the influence for all of the different factions is a lot of fun as well. I like really enjoy this game. I can't wait to get the upgrade set for this to make this even more exciting to play. So I can't wait to play Dune even more. I love it. Dune Imperium, my number seven. All right. Good. I was not this I expect it, Roy. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know it would make your top ten, but the by the mere fact you had not said it yet. Oh well of course. Yeah, no, I and figured, I, I, I yeah, figured you it'd be in a it. top ten. Yeah. Wow. wow. So, <clears throat> Mr. Good. Dreadful says, Tom, are you alone? The answer is no. I mean, no, I'm with you guys. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> Vlad is a new member. Hooray. Woo. Woo. All right. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Woo. What are we doing? Woo. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> My number seven is amazing for a number of reasons. Number one is I never would have guessed that I would have a war game 
in my top 10 games of all time. But yet here we are. Apparently, if you want me to play a war game, you have to make it war between anthropomorphic animals. My number seven is Root. Um, wow, <laughs> I really think this is a amazing design. It the 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 fact that you have asymmetrical powers that none of which seem out of balance all seem powerful in their own way and create such amazing interactions amongst the players at the table. I just, I think that Root is an incredibly de designed game. Uh, I like the fact that the theme actually helps me learn the game to an extent. There's a little bit of story behind all the factions and they kind of tie into the mechanics. So if you're the cats, you start out all over the board. You're the you know, the, the, the big, strong force in the game. If you're the birds, you're kind of were strong at one point, and now you've been relegated to one corner of the board, and you need to find a way to rebuild yourself. If you're the Woodland Alliance, you're trying to burst up from nowhere. I like the new uh, factions that have been added. As a matter of fact, my favorite faction of the whole game, the moles. Love me, the moles. So, Root is a game that uh, I, I I'm gonna absolutely take that quote love out of the playing. <laughs> Love me some moles. Matter of fact, <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Well, hang on a second, then. You could put that on the on the box, Leader Games. You have my permission right now. Love me some moles, Mike Felicio. It's a great game. Root is a really special design, and uh, I, I I just I think it's great. I'm enjoying the Mike. fact you called it a war game, thus I, thereby sparking giant debates. I saw so many moles actually in the all chat. Well, Mike uh, knows what he's talking about. Uh, I This is a crossover with him. Not for Root. Calm down. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is a game you previously mentioned, and I agree. It is a beautiful, enjoyable, fantastic game called Abyss. That's my number Ooh. seven. It's under the ocean. There's a society down there. That we don't even know about it until this game came out. We just didn't, we weren't aware of it. But they have a military arm and they have, uh, you know, uh, politics down there. Farming is happening down there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's a war game, I would say. I would describe it's it a as war. a war game. Definitely a war game, clearly. <laughs> yeah. No, Abyss is a beautiful game. It's uh, the. It, it's gorgeous. It, I love the idea that every time you are, the the bigger and better actions you'd like to take for yourself, the more cards you want to look at and make a better choice, the more you want to collect, whatever. Every time you make that choice, you are giving your opponents more things to look at, more possibilities to buy something before you get a chance to take it. That is so interesting to base mm -hmm. an entire game around that idea of the more you help you, the more you help them. And it works. It just, it's great. It brings out people's different personalities, you know. Uh, I enjoy it every time it comes out. Love teaching this game, too. I don't know what it is, but I just love teaching this game. Abyss. What about if someone wants to get it, Z? Should they get one or both expansions? Boy, I would just, I mean, I like I always say, get the game. You might not like it. This is not, you know, these things aren't bulletproof. But I think the second expansion with the big monsters, Leviathan, Leviathan. I believe. Yeah, Leviathan. there's the Kraken and Leviathan. I would say get that one. I think it's a better expansion. I think Leviathan is a considerably actually better expansion. If you must get one, get that. But, you know, try, try <sighs> the base game first. That bums me out. It's the one I haven't played. I played Kraken. Uh, but I haven't played. Yeah, I think, think I think the second one is better. Yeah. All right, Abyss. All right, the People's Choice number seven. It was it came on at four, then it was three, then five, six, seven. So next year I assume it will be eight. Wow. Um, this is Pandemic again. Legacy season one. Mm. This was number one on Board Game Geek. Obviously, what I find interesting is every year more people play it for the first time. And mm -hmm. every year when those people play the game, I kind of go in and I'm like, let me read what they talked about. Cause I want to see what they think when certain things happen. I'm, right. I'm amused by that. I feel like I'm, I'm getting to enjoy that experience over again. Cause we can all be like, yeah, remember this? So I don't know. I just, I think it's fun. And also I think the, 
actual real life pandemic, keeping people inside allowed people to finish some legacy games this year. <laughs> mm-hmm. So How about that, yeah. And this one works yeah. pretty well with two. Mm-hmm. So that helps too. Yeah. So yeah. pandemic legacy season one. Okay, my number six. This is the fourth year it's been on the list. It debuted in 2017. Made Z yell on my video loudly because it debuted at number one. But I still really enjoy this game a lot. It's number six, Gloomhaven. And I guess I didn't even think about this when I put it on the list, but I probably should agree with Mike somewhat and say Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. But after I played Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion... I was like, all right, let's keep playing Gloomhaven, you know. I have it at my house. I'm very much looking forward to Frosthaven and stuff. But there is a lot of content. If Isaac (laughs) would announce that Frosthaven wasn't coming, I'd go, I guess I can still play Gloomhaven while I wait for it, you know, for a decade. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of content in Gloomhaven. Yes. But the base concept of it, no one else has copied that two-card system because it's so complex. Isaac Childress, just brilliant guy. Um, sometimes his games, in fact, many of his other games kind of have missed things, you know, because they're too much. They're too euro There's too much stuff. But Gloomhaven met that right down the middle. I really like this game, Gloomhaven. Mm. It's yes. pretty popular from what I hear. <clears throat> yeah, like yeah. It. So my number six is a gigantic, big, epic, sprawling game. I'm sure you'd expect no less, but this is a game that I normally only play one time a year, and I recently played it this year with Mike and Tom and, and Mr. Bonacore. drop off your list. It didn't drop off my list. <laughs> Bonacore drug it down Ooh. a little bit, but this is Twilight ah. Imperium 4th Edition. <laughs> I really enjoy Twilight Imperium. I love the giant, sprawling, epic nature of it. I wish I had more time to play games like this. Like, what I would give to not have the responsibilities to be able to play Twilight Imperium all the time. But this game is an Tom awesome... Tom can help you with that, you know? Awesome, <laughs> epic game hey. of of just space negotiation and combat and conflict and, and passing laws and trying to talk your opponent into helping you out in just some other way and please don't attack me, don't go over here, and building up your technologies in War Sons. This game is a game that every time you play it, you're never going to forget your play of the game, mostly because it took you like a, a big portion of your life to actually do it, but it's very enjoyable. I love no, Flood Imperium. Don't make a Mike Delicio joke right now. <laughs> I, Roy, I got to say, I did not think this would be in your top 10 because when we played, you, you kept sighing it. and saying, this is too long. This mm. is not as good as it used to be. That was definitely that- the feeling I got from you. That mm-hmm. is true, but I still really enjoy how the game comes together overall. I really yeah. like it. And a lot of that is mostly just me not having the time to play it as much as I wish. But I think I think it's a great game, and I think it does a lot of really awesome things. I mean, I actually really enjoy the fighting with each other. I just wish I had mm. more time to do it. Oh, I thought you guys played, better. Uh, oh. You guys also played with that uh, rose-tinted glasses expansion. So there's that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Steve says the Brothers Mirth are planning to play Gloomhaven. That's nice. And Eric says, what are the lyrics to your theme song? <laughs> You're going to have to go listen to those yourself. Sorry, Eric. Mm-hmm. Jeez, I don't know who it was. I heard the Tom Gar- Vassal see, yeah. was a Voice giant of the people. Man. I don't well, remember any of There's nothing there it. where the question mark is. He's wondering. It just says Z Garcia. I mean, I don't know. It says my name. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> All right, my number six is a game that sounds very similar to a game that Z had in our last list with a slight difference. It's not Blue Moon, Z, although that's a fine game in its own right. My number six is Blue Moon City, set in the same world. Uh, Blue Moon came first. That's the battling card game. Blue Moon City basically takes the art and the theme such as it is and puts it into more of a straightforward Euro game. A good game. And I ab- yeah, it's, it, I absolutely love Blue Moon City because it's one of those games that gives you a large number of cards 
that let you feel clever. You think, okay, there's three or four things I'd like to do on this turn. I want to move over here. I want to bring this dragon over here. And I want to put a cube or two on this particular tile. I don't know if I can do that. You look at your cards, you go, oh, you know what? If I do this and then I get this, it lets you feel clever. It lets you kind of play cards in ways that, that, that just let you either do exactly what you want or just enough to feel like, okay, well, I still had a good turn. Not exactly what I wanted. So it's a game that gives you positive reinforcement. I'm sorry. I like games that let you feel like you've done something on your turn. Blue Moon City is one of those games. You don't I'll, ever feel I'll, like you've I'll wasted a turn. There. Help there, Mike. I need games that let me yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Exactly. You're not going to you know, feel like you got everything that you accomplished done, but it just lets you feel clever. It's a very, it, there's a racing element to the game as well that I really like with some kind of little clever Kinesia scoring twist where you're trying to be the first to get your cubes on there because it gets more and more expensive to put a cube on your obelisk, which is what you need to do to win the game. So Blue Moon City is a game that uh, I, I continue to come back to again and again. It's uh, it's just a wonderful design. Uh, you're 100% right about it making you, you know, helping you feel clever. You're 100% mm -hmm. right. All right, Jesse, my number... Go ahead. Jesse said TI4 needs a Jaws of the Lion. Uh, <laughs> I'm working maybe. on it. Oh, yeah, sorry. hey, uh. no, that would be good. I would. I might think about maybe trying uh, that. Let's not start lying. Matthew also says, thank you for top 10 list, the highlight of his day. Thank you, Matthew. Appreciate it. All right, my number six and is going Paul to be... Paul says, Roy and Mike and Eric need theme songs. My Eric has a theme number song. six <laughs> is going <laughs> to be a game I enjoy. This nope. is the time for your Kennedy, Z. Right. You're, wa you're wasting this golden <laughs> opportunity. I'm going this to tell you why. This is a great game. <laughs> <laughs> no, my number six, somebody was actually calling it earlier. It's Deus is my number six. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, this is my outlive, Mike. Nobody cares yeah. about this game, man. It's just not, you know, it doesn't get a lot of love. Yeah. But I really like it. I think it's such a good combination of uh, tableau building with then some units on this map and, and you know, moving, taking over areas surrounding these uh, barbarians and scoring points for that. It's a straight-up Euro game with some, you know, collection of you know, collecting resources and spending them to build cards. Those cards are coupled with a unit that shows up on the board. I love the fact that as you build more and more cards into the same category of thing, say ships, then when you build a new one, you trigger that new ship card and every previous ship card in that column. So the more you do it, the, the bigger and better and more grandiose triggering that thing gets. That's great. And then just mechanically, it's so clean. This is... A, a card game at its core, at its heart, but man, mechanically, just so fun. It, it's got this forward momentum that I love because when you take a, a rest turn to refill your hand, those are really quick, you know? So it's just always moving forward. I love the, the way this game feels. Deus, number six, gorgeous game. It's a good game. Gorgeous. That's not the right word, but I think it's a pretty board. I don't know what the deal is with everybody hating on this game's board. Really? You gave you gave the you gave the uh, pirate game. What's that? I can't remember the name of it now. Yeah, that's got, right. Got waters. You said that cover looks bad, and then you're going on about Deus's board. Come on, come on, come on, Ardo. Thanks for the fist bump. Come on, yeah, fist it's, it's, bump. The board, it utilizes geometry. I like the geometry of the board. I think that cover looks chaotic. Kids, this is why you should like geometry. Marcus, <laughs> thank you for the thank you. That's Let's a jump good to the people's. Awesome spin on that. Z's just saying there needs to be more rhombuses in board games. I'm with you. I get what you're saying, Z. <laughs> Give me doing... a good parallelogram. That's all I need. All right. Somebody Number six there. for the people is a big found jump. There. Somebody found their geometry thesaurus. Yeah. Uh, the people's number six was 69 last year. So that's a pretty big jump. Last year was the first wow. year it, it was on the it's list. A huge jump. Yeah, but it's a very popular game, and it's on at least two of y'all's lists, and that's Everdell. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Pretty big to make the top 10, though, Everdell, right? That's, that's yeah, awesome. That's, that's great. Yep. 
Very okay. popular game. No, mm-hmm. I mean, if you remember at the last con, I, don't. I was about to say we went to, but the last con that existed, um, they started West. There was Everdell was being played everywhere. I had three Absolutely. copies of it yes. there, and it was just constantly in play. And it wasn't a mm-hmm. brand new game. No. Yeah. That was right. very. Yeah. So that's. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I just find that kind of cool. Anyway, right, y'all, please. number six, Everdell. Halfway. And my number five was my number five last year, two years in a row on the list. And it's not going to change as long as I keep pumping out new stuff for it. And that's Chronicles of Crime. I love this game. And every time we talk about this game, besides the people who are anti-app, people say it's just a bunch of scanning. That's sort of true, but that's you could reduce any game to that. I could say this game is just a bunch of drawing cards. This game is just a bunch of shuffling. This game is just a bunch of dice rolling. It's more than just scanning stuff. You have to figure out what to <laughs> scan and where. And when yeah, you're yeah. in the middle of the scanning, you're all talking about this story. You're all saying, I think that she stabbed this guy because uh, he seemed very irritated with her. I don't know. That just that that's it's the story to to just reduce it to just scan everything. First of all, you can't do that. There's too many combinations halfway through the game. Secondly, it's that interaction with the players. And while I think it's a fine solo game, I really love this game with at least one other person. Me, it's one me and my wife like playing because we'll sit there and go, "Oh, we think he's guilty. Just look at his." <laughs> Look at that guy's face. Yeah. And the way he yeah. talked about her. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I really like it. And I still got plenty more coming. So be on my list for a while. Chronicles of Crime. Awesome. My number five is a big, sprawling space exploration sandbox game. People were asking about it in chat earlier this session. They keep mentioning it. And this is Zaya Legends of a Drift System. I really enjoy Zaya. Finally. (laughs) (laughs) I really enjoy Zaya. I really enjoy the whole system of like, you have a spaceship and you start with very little, but then as you go out, you're exploring different areas of space. You're trying to pick up cargo. You can drop it off. You can turn into more of a pirate and start blasting NPCs or blasting the other players. Or you can try to build up so that way you can move back and forth faster to be able to pick up and deliver things even faster. I really enjoy Zaya and it has lots of opportunities. This is definitely Zaya with the expansion because it adds a lot more to the game, lots more to explore, a lot better like pick up and deliver system, and a lot of new things you can put on your ship. I love the polyomino Tetris pieces going under your ship in different ways. And you can buy different ships trying to figure out exactly the right build you want for your ship as you're going out and exploring space. This game is a ton of fun and I love to play it. It is Zaya Legends of a Drift System. There you go. I'm just I'm just relieved, Roy, because no one else had put it on their list and I didn't want people to think Oh, we chat was it, going it, crazy every single thing. And I'm like, <laughs> I know. did you not vote in the people's Zaya? choice? Come on. Zaya is just a game that people are huge fans of the one, the, yeah. the ones who are, mm-hmm. uh, and that weird white and black bow she wears is very weird. <laughs> what do you got, Mike? I uh, missed that one completely. Yeah, I, 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 I was trying all. to get the I was I was trying to get the uh, the reference, but uh, I don't get it. Meanwhile, Paul says right. I have a big problem scanning and apps because of big tech. It looks to fall apart soon. What? Oh, uh, well, thanks for the super chat, Paul. But I figure until it falls apart, I'm going to have a really fun time. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. My number five is amazing to me because it was a game that I was very disinterested in playing. As a matter of fact, I only agreed to play because a friend wanted to get it to the full five player count. And I said, all right, I'll sit down and play this game. I have zero interest. My number five game is Smartphone Inc. Uh, Man, am I glad that I sat down at that table. Um, It is an economic... It has so many things that theoretically should not be for me. It's an economic game. It is a game that has player screens that are literally made up of nothing but multiplication tables. (laughs) It looks like it is absolutely overwhelming. This is one of the most clever and streamlined interactive games I've ever played. And Z, you were talking about loving to teach Abyss. I don't think there's a game I like teaching more 
than Smartphone Inc. Because almost every time I do it, there's people sitting around the table that look either uneasy or like they're afraid it's going to be this big, heavy thing. And by the time I'm done and I explain the round structure, they've all and left. you go. Th- no, 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 no. It's exactly no, no. the opposite. It's exactly what happened They're to all me. Into it. And you do that first round of putting those two uh, tiles together to, to plan out your actions. It just clicks and people are just like, oh, oh, oh. you know, what like, I, mean? I hate to break it to you, buddy. But while you're teaching and you're thinking, man, they're all really into the theme. They're actually just checking their phones. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. But I have had a lot of success teaching this game to people. It's it's a wonderful, wonderful game, and it's uh, very quick too. I mean, it it's uh, you know snappy, snappy game, and uh, I, I really see. Enjoy have you played this one? Smartphone Inc. I have played, yeah, 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 and I've played the expansion, two player. Mm-hmm. The expansion has a board which is yep. kind of tighter for two players. Mm-hmm. Really like that that expansion. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah, not stuff. one I would have recommended bef- for the original game. I said four is good, five is great. I probably wouldn't play below that. I won't say that now because you've got the two and three player board. I mean, the original one's fine with fewer. You just have to block off a few things. But yeah, the new yeah. board. Yeah, new board right. is great for two. It really is. All right, guys, my number five. I don't want to hear any garbage. You will. <laughs> number five is my only pandemic in my top 100 if you want to oh. think of this as a catch-all that's fine you can think of it as a catch-all i like too many of these games too much to end up with six entries in my top 100 being pandemic games that's just me that's how i rationalize that which one did i pick of the basic core well, set yes Go for it. Okay, so you, ba- you already said basic core set, so it won't be one of the legacy. Yeah, not a, just, uh, yeah like if you not know, a I, out of the gate, I like the most. Iberia. No. Wall of Rome. No. Um, Cthulhu. Cthulhu. No. <laughs> uh, normal pandemic. No. Rising <laughs> time. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if I upset them all. It was Iberia, the first one. (laughs) (laughs) You're the worst game show host in the world. I know, right? Uh I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. The game ended 10 minutes ago. Congratulations (laughs) to the Lopez's. Good night. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Pandemic Iberia, yes, that's my number five. Uh, But again, whatever. Substitute another pandemic in here if if you like a different one better. I like Iberia out of the gate. I like Iberia to teach because I think it's very pretty compared to a lot of the other ones. I think Iberia is the, the prettiest core uh, pandemic set. It's got a cool theme mm-hmm. that no one's going to give you grief about. They're like, pandemic? But it's actually just Roman soldiers? I know. I know. <laughs> um, it's got very interesting mechanisms built right into the core game that reward both Long play and short play, right? You want to be tactical. You want to make plans, adjust, sort of react to what's going on. You want to build some infrastructure on the board. You want to take some long-term plans into account. If you wait, by the time you need them, you're done. You won't have time to, to, you know, react. So, yeah, you mix all of that together. You get a gorgeous, well-designed, interesting co-op game with a great theme in this case. So, yes, Pandemic, Iberia. I think is a a beautiful, stunning, engaging game. Just don't be an alpha gamer. That's not a game problem. That's a you problem. <laughs> Stop it. Can you look at someone else when you say that? All right. <laughs> People's <laughs> Choice number five was their 23 last year. Last year, that's where it debuted. It was the highest game to debut last year. Moved up to five. And that is the Quacks. Of Quedlingburg. Uh, this, again, yeah. another game I remember at Dysar West. It was nonstop being played. And I remember that it was nonstop being played at the previous year's Dice Tower West. Just mm. constant people love this game. <clears throat> and it definitely, like I said, it's one of those games where people are standing around going, oh, we don't know what new game to try. I'm like, have you tried this? No, let me teach you. It's just mm-hmm. really good. 
So, yeah. and again, I always feel like I have to make this caveat. Go get the, the geek up bits. They're oh, that sure. good. They're awesome. From Board Game Geek. Yes, they are the price of the game. Yes, you'll play the game double the amount you would anyways. So it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Genway says, thank you for the past week. It's been fun and helped out being isolated. Our pleasure. Thank you. Four more games. My number four was number 10 last year, but it was number one the year before that. It's number four now because the new edition came out. Woo! And that is Project Elite. Oh. I'm sorry. There's just nothing about mowing down aliens. You know, you want to get your frustrations out. Nobody is going to complain that you're just chopping up tons and tons of these evil aliens coming into your base. This game is so entertaining and so fun. And uh, while Z says that no game can cause an alpha problem, this game goes out of its way to not have one. So I believe Z was wrong. Um, the problem in this game is not you. The problem is you said that Pandemic doesn't have an alpha gamer problem, but uh-huh. Project Z doesn't even give you the possibility of doing it. You don't have time, and that's oh, amazing. Nice. It's just I during the pauses, you just stuff. you just shake your head in shame at your teammates. You're like, really? Yeah. Really? Come on. You know, there's, there's also... <laughs> thousands of games that are not cooperative that don't give you the opportunity for alpha gamers <laughs> that just proves my point well there's a, Project will, there's Elite, a, way. a fantastic uh and the miniatures from come on certainly helped up and up again I, I i mean i love the game with the melted in the sun pieces of garbage that were in the original one yeah and that yeah. stuff certainly helps so so this was 10 so this was one for you that year that you were like oh and then 10 and now back down to four, is that right? Or back up to four? Yeah, it's back up to four. Well, I mean, the new version came out. And again, I just put these in order where they are. When I first played it, I was playing it all the time. I cooled yes. on it a little bit last year, slightly. And then this year, I was like, oh, it's back with expansions, with exoskeleton suits. And I mean, there's right. so much cool stuff. Right, mm. right, right. So cool. Awesome. My number four <laughs> was Such number like four. Awesome. <laughs> My, I love that game. I mean, it is literally awesome. Um, my number four was number four in 2017, was number four last year, and it's number four this year. This is my highest, highest rated cooperative game. I love this game. This is Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. Oh. I love Mansions of Madness. Mansions of Madness is a blast to play. I, it's app-assisted, but it's got all these cool, interesting puzzles, and you're trying to figure out what happened in each of the different scenarios. There are tons of scenarios, tons of expansions. I have all of it for the game. If they announce a DLC for this, I just buy it. You know, Fantasy Flight could come out with DLCs that aren't actually actually real, and I'd just be like, buy, done, buy, done. I love <laughs> Mansions of Madness. They'd probably do it <laughs> if I said it too loud. But um, I love Mansions of Madness. <laughs> <laughs> I love working together in this game and trying to come up with what's going on in the puzzle. It's got that creepy Cthulhu mythos going on within the game, and you're trying to figure out how to grab the right items and figure out what's going on and working together. I mean, I've said working together a whole bunch of times, but that's how I feel like this game is. It's just a lot of fun. Well, I really thought Lord of the Rings would pass this for you. The main reason that it hasn't, the number one reason that it hasn't, is this is episodic where you play it and you sit at the table and you play through a whole game and you're done. The Lord of the Rings one is a campaign and you have to spend lots of hours to get through the whole game. And I can't make a campaign happen nearly as much. So this game is On a side note, I agree with you. And that's my biggest worry about the new Descent game. Mm, that's yeah. a big deal. I did not mm-hmm. know that. I did not realize the Lord of the Rings one was was like that. That is mm-hmm. a that is a big deal. I yeah. It is. Yeah, I'd be must less interested in that. Uh, I, yeah, I, just the time requirement, man. I yeah, just love that yeah. I can throw this on the table. It's actually extremely easy to teach as well because you just start with a character and you start with a thing, and I can easily explain how the dice rolls work, ex- easily explain how the actions work, and we just go from there and explore the game together. This is another one where you don't have to do a whole lot of rules teaching at the beginning. You just jump into it, and I love Mansions of Madness for that, and it's my number one cooperative game. So number Woo. one this is your number one. Great. No more cooperation for his last three is what he's saying. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> wow, Roy, you and I have something in common here. Your number four is the same as your last year's number four. My number four 
was also number four last year. It's going to be number four next year. It's <laughs> Z's number four. My number four <laughs> is Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. A big 4X game. And I don't really tend to love 4X games. They they usually are a little bit too much for too, me. Mike. But I think you like them and you just don't. You're just not admitting it. Well, well, maybe it's that I haven't played enough to know. I, I said the same thing about skirmish games, but maybe that maybe I will like them as I play more of them. Who knows? Well, I, I just haven't played Brady, a lot. Every dummy, I like this or I don't like this. I just assume it's a lie. Damn. Well, a lie means that I'm actively going out of my way to deceive Fine. you, Tom. I don't appreciate oh. the implication. <laughs> it may just be that I haven't played enough of them. But Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea is uh, a lot of fun. It's a game that has you know, different factions that play slightly different from each other, but not very different from each other. And there are multiple ways that you can win the game. Uh, it, I feel like it has uh, just enough randomness where it doesn't feel like everything is kind of predetermined, but not so much randomness that the game feels like you you don't have any agency. Um, it really is one of those games that it looks amazing on the table. It has these beautiful cardboard constructs and miniatures but it also has some clever card play as well. It has a combat system that I like a whole lot uh, where you can really get into the head of your opponent and you know you think you might know what they might do, but there's all this double think of, well, I think they're gonna do this, so maybe I'll play, but they might think I think that. So I bet- Wait, yeah. wait, wait. I got it. <clears throat> right, <laughs> exactly. I've heard of this game before. All right. Yeah, you might've heard of this. So anyway, Z's number four, Heroes of Land, <laughs> Air, and Sea. <laughs> I have not played it. I know. I know. No, you do not add this to his catch-up palooza. No, he would not I'm like I'm not sure this is your cup of tea, Z. I don't it's know. It's a bit faster. Why, but... What are you trying to imply? I'm a dummy? We're saying it's too hard for you. I Drives up with is. training wheels. It's pretty simple. All I right. think Tom's That's saying you're advice. a liar is what he's saying. He's saying you're a liar is what he's saying, Z. Unintentional liar. <laughs> yes. Well, speaking of training wheels, my number four is uh, Yamatai with training wheels. This is five tribes. <laughs> okay. No one's ever used that as a description. <laughs> I just did. Put it on the box. <laughs> five <laughs> tribes is a fantastic game. I've, I've loved this game from the very first time I played. It is a... It, it's got this Mancala style sort of very, very central core, picking up a bunch of characters in the city made up of uh, heck of squares and moving them around, dropping them off, and then taking an action with them. But everything that and from there, kind of everything else you do feels to me like a like a Euro game that you've played just off like slightly different like a tweak mm -hmm. on everything you've kind of seen right so it's not worker placement it's kind of this worker displacement and you're you know collecting sets but the way you do it is a little different because some of the cards are used for something else and it's just everything's a little you want to empty places so you can control them not fill them it's just kind of mm -hmm. weird i mean it's yeah i just love it i think it's a great game expansions are great this game has had a nice amount of support and I, I appreciated that this is a classic i mean we we throw the term modern classic around a lot for me this deserves to become one if it isn't one already five tribes mm -hmm. is amazing my number here, four here. still should make it your number five though just for I mean, that's sure whatever you want I'm, one I'm, I'm, lower ah. i'm easily swayed i'll make it five next time no problem got it People's Choice, number four, was their number four last year. Number seven before that, 47. It's the very popular Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven, of course, hitting the Ooh. list. And I don't think Jaws of Lion hurt, although Jaws of Lion was a separate game. It was it came in at number 34. Wow. So, That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Will Frosthaven make four I don't th Actually, I don't know if Frosthaven will make the list next year because I don't know when it's coming out this right. coming year, but it's going to be a good chunk into the year. So yeah. Yeah. This is mm. easily the heaviest, biggest game. I would never expect to be at the top of one of these lists for mm. sure. No, the so, fact that it is so popular and uh, a lot of people have heard about it, read about it, hear about it does worry me. I just saw a post on, I think it was Twitter of 
or maybe Facebook of someone who said, oh, we, you know, my, my spouse and I are used to playing card games and we played, you know, um, like they mentioned a few basically mass market games. So here's our first haul ever. And they had a copy of Pandemic, The Trail of the House on the Hill, <laughs> and Gloomhaven. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good luck and leave that one for last, you know? Right. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I do worry about that. But hey, it's clearly popular. It's doing something right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, the Don 100 says, thanks for helping me get into the hobby since 2008 and for Mike's solo videos to help me during this COVID time. Oh, thank Jared you. Jared says he loves having Mike and Roy on the series. Sweet. They really add a good dynamic to the team, even though my tastes align more with Tom. And Adrian says, thanks for timing it so that Swiss viewers can enjoy it live. Wow. wow. Did you do that on purpose, that's, that's Tom? That's why we're doing it now. I mean, that's really. right. It's definitely Swiss. All right, my number three has been on my list since the very beginning, 2005, and it was also number three in 2006, although there was a seven-year stretch where it was number one, and that is Cosmic Encounter. By the way, still pointing out not a huge number difference between one and three. You know, so. You used to love it, Tom. Remember <laughs> back, back in the day where for years and years and years and years you loved this game? Right. What happened? Oh, yes, How the Mighty Have Fallen. Cosmic, still an amazing game, although the this 2020 was the year I played it the least compared to other years, probably for a decade. It just did not get played as much, and that is definitely a lack of conventions. This is one of those games I would pull out. Yeah, for sure. But ah, I'm sure it will come up, and it doesn't mean I like the game any less, and it's certainly the oldest game on my list. This cancels out Cult of the New for pretty much everything else I say, you know, with how old it is. Ha, ha, ha. Cosmic Encounter. And also, I think I missed another super chat here. Jasper saying greetings from New Zealand. Hey. That's amazing. Is, it's, uh, just, it's unbelievable to see people from everywhere in the world watching really us and, and getting together here. It's amazing, guys. Y'all are all. Has, awesome. uh, has Cosmic uh, Encounters Duel, Tom, has that killed Cosmic Encounter for you? Is that why it's dropped so far down your list? <laughs> yeah. or Cosmic Encounter Duel would not even show up in my top thousand, actually. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, is, my top that is coming, right? Yeah. Your top 1,000 is, is happening? <laughs> That's happening, right. No comment. No <laughs> attempt, MC. We'll see. Stretch, go! Awesome. My number three is a game that has already been mentioned by Mr. Mike Delisio. I do want to put a little of a caveat out here. I've been playing a ton of a different 4X game, but I still really, really enjoy this, so don't take too much into this. People might think this is a upset, but my number three is Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. I love Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. It's an amazingly fun game. <laughs> I love the combat. I love the way the game works. I love... I love Man. just all the different factions and all the different special abilities. I just really enjoy the 4X genre and what that brings to the table. I mean, I love building up like this little civilization and getting resources and putting things together and unlocking special abilities and then using that stuff to try to take over different areas and force for the end game. There's four different ways to end this game. It has the exploring, the exploiting, the exterminating, and everything in between in this game that makes it a great 4X game. I love it, and it just looks crazy on the board. Explore, expand, exploit. We get it. You know the four X's, There's technically Roy. five ways for this game to end. <laughs> yes, and board flip. Um, but yeah, and mm -hmm. this, this is just one of those games that when you... I have never played a game of this where somebody outside of the game didn't come up and look at the game and be like, what yeah. in the world is this? Like, this looks amazing. Challenge accepted. Cool. Let's go. <laughs> set it up. I have to go, like, set up I'll in a room. People just ignore me. But <laughs> it just looks beautiful because it has all these 3D constructs on the board. You have 3D ships and 3D flying things, and you're building up your little towers all over the board. It just looks great, and it's a blast to play. Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. I love it. But not as much as you used one. to. But I can't I, say anything because of my number three. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Saying, yeah. Real quick before you go, Mike. Mar Marcello says we have the best channel in the world from Brazil. Wow. Good. iOS Aider says... Thanks for all we do. When things are back to normal, will we have a Dice Tower Midwest in Kansas? Um, we'd like to get our other conventions back out from underneath the ground <laughs> where they're currently buried first. 
Yes, yes. And mm-hmm. Henrique says hello from Brazil. That's two from Brazil in a row. Man, Ooh. we had some from Brazil before, too. That's great. Step up, other countries. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We've had Brazil and Peru in this chat. That's awesome. That is uh, My number three, I've uh, talked throughout this top 100 list about my love for the West Kingdom games. All three of them made an appearance in my top 100, but... The game that got me into this kind of designer's games is my number three, which is Raiders of the North Sea. Thankfully, Tom already kind of uh, blazed this trail where he said that he counts it with the expansions, and it's the same way for me. The base game is fantastic. It's a, it's a really great uh, entry, slightly above entry level worker placement game with a place one, take one worker placement uh, little twist that I love. But when you add the expansions into it, it becomes just a brilliant worker placement game with a, a, a really cool theme, amazing artwork, a rule set that is not overwhelming but gives you so much bang for the buck, so to speak. You get a really robust game without getting bogged down in a lot of unnecessary rules. Um, Raiders of the North Sea is a game that I just know that I'm going to be playing for years to come. I love teaching it to people. Uh, it's a, another game that, like Roy is talking about, you walk past it people tend to be interested in what's going on. So my number three is Raiders of the North Sea, a beautiful, fantastic design. By the way, you guys, Mike, you said you're not watching chat. It is amazing the number of various countries that have flown by. Tons really? and tons and tons. And yeah, we also yeah, just passed cool. 3,000 viewers. Yeah, Italy. My, my wow. mom literally just texted Denmark, me. Denmark, Greece, Louisiana. It's amazing, all these countries. My that mom texted fantastic. me and it popped up on the screen. Romania. Like, past 3,000. <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> New the Jersey. The moon. Somebody well, said right. the moon. Well, one person said, greetings from right behind you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My All number right. three uh, has been on everyone's list that has taste. This is The Others. Yes. <laughs> Mike Delicio likes it. I think it was on Roy's list. It wasn't list on my list because I've only played it the one time. You need to play it with me more, Zeke. Fine, on. I'm not amending my statement. Mike Delicio's <laughs> list. Um, and I simply adore it. Uh, yes, it's grown on me quite a bit since the beginning, but even when I first played it, I, I thought it was fantastic. Because, again, it speaks to that. Oh, my goodness. I just hit my table. Everything went crazy. Um... <laughs> It speaks to that sensibility I like in games, which is a good balance between fun, crazy, rawr, or post-apocalyptic kind of theme, coupled with strong, you know, solid sort of bones and mechanisms under that. Mm -hmm. I said it about claustrophobia, and this one is the same thing. It's a crazy theme, monsters, you're fighting these demons or sins or crazy stuff with your super-powered beings. But mechanically speaking, it's interesting. You uh, you know, everything is, is is right there. You can, both sides can fight. It's an all, ver- you know, all versus one kind of game. Both sides can, can go right at each other and the game feels balanced. I know mm. I've heard a lot of complaints about, oh, one side feels stronger than the other one. No, that was just your game. Someone's either holding back or, or something was off. But the game is, it's, it's there. Trust me. Uh, yeah, the others. I love it. My number three. What Where was, was this, this you? before, Tom? I don't know. Yeah, I was curious. Uh, is it under the or under others? Um, others, probably. Not under others. I'm going down okay, to the. the. There it is. It was three last year and four the year before that, and then 27 back when you hated it. <laughs> I'm glad I like it now. <laughs> All right. John Miguel says, greetings from Guatemala. Wow. Wow. And William says, thanks for filling up a tough week. You guys rock. Thank you. You rock. All right. Thank you. All right. In 2011, we started doing the People's Choice. And for two years in a row, Dominion was number one. Then that fell to Pandemic, which was number one for four years in a row. Our number three has now fallen from its spot, where it was number one for three years in a row. It is now number three, but that's still pretty good for another Stonemaier game, Scythe. 
wow. side. Debuted okay. at 19, then was number one three years in a row, and now three. To have two games in the top 10, well, that's pretty good. Vinny Culture yeah. and, Not and too bad. side. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this game just appeals to a lot of people. I know it appealed to some people because, hey, it looks like a war game. And then to other people because it actually isn't. <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. right. there's that mix in there. Uh, so that's the people's number three side. But first, Mark wants to know why there's no love for the greatest card game of all time, Phase 10. Because lies. And Joe says, thanks for the awesome content. I appreciate it and hope to see everyone at the next retreat. Yes. And we say, Joey, thanks for the fantastic picture you drew. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, Joey. Oh, hey, Joe. That was fantastic. Thank you. And then the to Die J, just gave us a thumbs up, I guess. Thank you. All right. Let's go number two. My number two has been on the list before. Last year, it was number nine. The year before that, it was 103. And I just, I have to put this as my number two because I play it so much. And I love this game, Space Base. Space Base is just there for me. It has supplanted Dominion as my just sit down and just grab a game and play it. And it only has one expansion. Well, I guess it, yeah, they only did come out with that one expansion. I don't care. I can play this game over and over and over and over again. I'm just throwing dice and playing the odds. It is, if I could gamble actual money on Space Base, I wouldn't. But if I <laughs> if I did gamble you actual could, money. You could, Tom. You could if you wanted to. You could do anything you want, Mike. But I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> no, I don't know. No, not anything. No. <laughs> well, technically, legally, there's some things you can't, Mike. Um, but uh, I think there's things you can't. Well, <laughs> he had to, he had to think of about course, it. there's things you can't do legally. Why are we? Why, why are we talking about this? Anyhow, I'm just saying it. It gives me straight up feeling of gambling. Like I can put all my stuff in one number, or I can do a spread. It just. It's so much fun. I really like this game. Um. I just realized I don't know if I've taught this to Ruby and Violet, and I think this would be a good one to play with them. I think they would like it a lot. So yeah. Space Space, my number two, up from number nine. Man, that's not an insignificant jump in the top ten. Right. Oh, for sure. It I is. thought about it for a while because I was trying to figure out where to put Space Space, and I kept, it kept jumping above all the rest. Wait, like, why well, don't Space you just make it number one? Stop being a punk is- about it. Because <laughs> number one is one. Uh, right, mm-hmm. Oh, this person said, hey, Siri, Noah, call me Tom, the voice of the people. Oh, now you're going to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I nice. can't believe that this person got you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> my number two is a game that I had never played the Gigantic Collector's Edition of before this year. And I have now played two separate copies of the Collector's Edition of this game this year. And this is War of the Ring. I don't think you need the Collector's Edition to enjoy this game. I think this game is great. I love the Lord of the Rings theme about around this game. It is like a war game that is dice and card driven as you're trying to figure out how to if you're the fellowship player, you're trying to figure out how to throw that ring into Mount Doom. If you're the, the shadow player, you're trying to figure out how to basically take all the strongholds from the free play people and get those points in there to win the game. This game feels like Lord of the Rings in a box, and I love Lord of the Rings. Um, and it doesn't play out exactly like the books do as well. It's just extremely entertaining seeing how you can forge your own story in the world of Middle Earth playing through this game. I played with Steven. I played with Jason this, this year. I played at least two times and it was a blast playing both times both times i did get wrecked but it was extremely enjoyable i love this game war of the ring my number two you had five armies or whatever earlier on right yes like in... and i definitely so, love this okay. way more than the battle of five armies i really actually enjoyed the whole no, I got political that. track I really and all that count. stuff it's great <laughs> <laughs> so just in case two i like my two closer to my... one Right. Then 47. No, I got that. Mm. Oh, for sure. Mm. Uh, math. Iteration says that he loves oh, our new yeah. four-way format. Thanks for our work we do for the hobby. Thank Boom. You. Thank you. All right, Mike, what do all you right. got? Z, what I have for you 
is two hooping, heaping, hooping, two hooping scoops, two heaping scoops of Cult of scoop. the New. Scoop two is. heaping scoops of no Cult way. of the New. A I'm new going. game at number two. Like brand Dwellings new. Both your one of... and your two are brand new. No, no. This one is okay. Dwellings of Eldervale. It's uh, oh, boy. No. No. That no. is going to be your number one. This is my number two. I, I look, I, I, I rated it a 10. I don't do that very often. I really, I mean, is there a perfect game? As I said in my review, no, but this is a perfect game for me. I love hybrid games. This is a hybrid game through and through where it's got these big monsters on the board. There's certainly some combat involved. And so it has that element. There's dice rolling. It has that element. Um, but it also has some Euro feel where you've got uh, a tableau that you're building in front of you and you've got workers that do d different types of workers that do different things that have different powers. I just fell in love with this game. The first time I played it as a pre-production copy, it has grown in its estimation. Every time I've played it, I like it as a solo game a whole lot. I like it as a multiplayer game a lot. I just, I feel like this is, game was almost designed for me. I don't know if you've ever had a game like that before where you're like, right. man, I just feel like this you game was made a game for like that, me. You hold it close and never let you it go. You do. <laughs> you do. That's right. And so I'm never letting Dwellings of Elder Vale go. Never. Is that why my never. copy's missing? Maybe. Never, he said. Never! <laughs> my number two... Is Dwellings of Eldervale. All right, a few quick shout outs here. <laughs> uh, Ron <laughs> says, Congrats and continued success for Channel Likes the Direction that we're going and expanding content and types. Ooh. Jeffrey says, You didn't know this channel existed until 2020. Oh, wow. I appreciate that. Thanks for the inspiration. Folks, if hey. there are other people who don't know we exist, tell them about us. Thumb up our stuff. Um, Shandy's a new member. And then finally, where did this one go? Jonathan says, Let's make 2021 the year of the rule book. He says to contact me to make your game rulebook easy to teach. Roy, that's up to you. Let's mm. work together to make rule books make the game. I do. Need I would an editor. hope that the year of the rulebook mm. would be like a year we don't need as many. Yes. Um, Mikhail says great list, but we're also having fun doing it, and chat is awesome. Go Z, go. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> My number two game I uh, love so much I legally married. Yes, <laughs> and I will never. You didn't invite me to the wedding. Go. I'm sorry, we eloped. <laughs> My number two is Atlantis Rising Second Edition. Oh, this relationship <gasps> is. I game. thought this would be your number one this year. I had so much money on that. Well, I thought you didn't bet, Tom. Yeah, right. That space base like, addiction. Do I bet got. against Ridiculous. Z or do I bet on space base? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Um, Atlantis Rising 2nd Edition is a an excellent cooperative game. It does. I think uh, Mike had it on his list. Is that right, Mike? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it's um, it's one of, I, in my opinion, I, I truly think this is one of the most attractive games that's ever been produced. The artwork, but also the style of everything. Mm -hmm. The fact that the board is this strange shape and it sinks from the outside in and you flip over tiles so that they look like they've, you know, they've been swallowed by the waves and the cards, the typography. I mean, things I just don't normally worry too much about or think about, but the style this thing exudes, I know shouldn't affect the experience that much, but you know what? You're looking at the thing for an hour and a half. It does. And on top of that, you put an excellent game with some push your luck mechanisms collecting resources, working with other people to build this crazy machine to take you to the stars or whatever it's doing, <laughs> to escape the city before it sinks. I just think it's amazing. Um, had a great game of this, teaching this at uh, uh, Dice Tower West, I believe that's where it was, yeah. And I, you know, we brought out a copy, set it up, played it, had a beautiful time. Everybody was lovely and everybody was just having a great time. So those kinds of experiences solidify this for me. Atlantis Rising, second edition, my number two. Oh, People's Choice. Sorry, I keep. <laughs> yes. I don't know why I keep thinking Mike You're is still thinking about me marrying Atlantis Rising. Are build, you? You weirdo. Building tension. 
<laughs> Think about it. Sinking. Number two for the people was number two last year and number two the year before that and six the year before that. This is Terraforming Mars. Terraforming That's Mars, huge. still very popular. And it's not going to hurt it to have the, the big box being released soon where people can keep all their stuff in one box. The card game coming out. Apparently a dice game, which I just can't imagine do, changing anything about it. But Terraforming Mars and having it out on app probably helps to some degree, too. It's a good the fact app. that it's a good app, really. Yeah, exactly. Uh, with possibly better than the game. Mm-hmm. Better looking, for sure. A bold that's old statement. That's what I did. I married the app. All right. <laughs> Anyhow, that's, so that's just gross. That's gross. Oh, uh, you've gone too far at <laughs> this point. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Hoyd is here taking a break from Brandon Sanderson's books and says his number one is Smoke and Sand, second edition. That is not my number one. My number one, unshockingly, is the same number one as last year. For once, I haven't been switching around. And that is La... 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 The Harbor. Mm. (laughs) La... La... Well, I think it's supposed to, since because it is French and you combine the two words... It would probably be Lav. I know that sounds weird, but it's mm-hmm. you don't pronounce the H, so it's Av, and so you don't say Le Av, so you say Lav. So you Lav. How, how, how did I do there, people? That's my number Lav. one. Anyway, tell me. I want to know how I did. I am still obviously an Uwe Rosenberg fan. I am not sure the newest game of his will hit the top 100 for me. We'll have to think about it and see. But this is such an amazing game for me. It's not the one the people's choice. Like, this one was on there at one point, and it fell mm-hmm. off. Gloom, I mean, not Gloomhaven. Um, Feast for Odin and Cavern and Agricola are the only three that have stuck on for them. Uh, but this one is still, I just enjoy getting lots of stuff. I've talked about it extensively. Still my favorite. Not only is it my favorite, it's Andy Herman's number one also. Ooh. And Sam says, thanks for all the great content. He's enjoying the revelation that Mike and I have such similar tastes. I'm surprised, Sam, that you are enjoying that fact. I would have thought you'd be calling a helpline. <laughs> Preston is a new- a, clearly a man of taste, discerning taste, one might say, and brilliance. Tom, I don't know if you like talking about like favorite designers, but would you say that Rosenberg is your favorite? Because listening to this list, you have a lot of Rosenberg games high up on your oh, list. Well, I got three that are high up. You're right. That seems correct, but I'd have to sit down and do some math on it. We're going to do our top 10 designers at some point. So, yeah, I don't okay. know. All right. I'm just saying if Rosenberg isn't number one on that list, you're a liar. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly a liar. There you go. So my number one is definitely my most played game of 2020. I have played this game an insane amount of times. And it doesn't help that they keep putting out more Do and it. more contact content for this game. Over and over and over. I have played this game so much. This is Marvel Champions. I have everything for this game. I have two core sets. I have two of the uh, expand big box expansion. I have tons and tons for this game. I love playing all of You're the showing decks off, bro. ton of different <laughs> villains. And it's a cooperative game that works extremely well solo, but I've also enjoyed playing it with people at conventions. It's been a blast playing it there. I also played it with my dad recently, and we played through the whole campaign for this game, and it was still a ton of fun in that experience. I've just had tons of amazing, great experiences with Marvel Champions. I love it solo. I love it with people, and I just love... I really enjoy card games and LCGs and being able to build out those combos. And this game has that in spades, mostly because a lot of the time you're playing out your entire hand every single turn. It feels more like a deck builder in that way because you're just spamming things out as fast as you can. But you're also fighting off villains and bad guys along the way. I love superheroes and I love this Marvel franchise. And Marvel Champions is my number one game of all time. I love it. What was what was this last year? 
I think it was Harvard. actually, it was, I think, 16 last year. So it has mm. jumped quite a bit. But it's just I thought, la- I'm pretty sure last year I asked, I, w- I was surprised and told you I thought it would be your number one because you liked it so much then. Right, but I just ha- there wasn't as much out for it, and I hadn't played it nearly as much. But I mean, yeah. so I-, I thought when going into building this list, I'm like, am I really going to do this? And I had to sit there and think, what game have I played the most? What game have I enjoyed the most? And and there's no small shortage of things by the fact that I can play this game solo. I can play it anytime I want. If you're locked up in quarantine, you can still play Marvel Champions, and I played a ton of it. I really enjoyed that's it, and cool. that's why it's wow. on top of my list. All right, cool. You're definitely, cool. you are this game's champion through and through. There's yeah. no, there's no denying for that. Sure. For yeah. sure, for sure. Anvar just dropped sixty six dollars on us, giving us a wow. dollar for each game on your list that were on my top one hundred. Wow. Thirteen Whoa. with Mike, fifteen with Tom, fifteen with Roy, twenty three with Z. Yeah, Whoa. baby, I'm getting lunch. But I actually, twenty three dollars. <laughs> well, I was actually gonna. I'll do some changes on my list if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, let wow. me know what games are on your we list. Can, oh, chat, we can on. negotiate here. We can absolutely <laughs> you're negotiate. You're sold here. out. You're sold out, Mike. <laughs> oh man. All right. I'm not saying I'm for sale. I'm just saying that my PayPal is okay. My number one, Scythe. I can't quit you. You had me at Riverwalk. I, I look looked... more comfortable with each number, <laughs> Mike. I'm sorry. I would say it's close to dropping a you had me at joke. <laughs> I couldn't give up with one to say, so I'm glad you did. I had to do it. Look, yeah, I mean, I've played a lot of fantastic games, games that I've played before that I that I like. I've liked more and have come up the list, but Scythe is still my number one game of all time. It's a game that I really feel it just is such an just such an elegant game. I love the efficiency built into it. I've said a million things about size, so I don't want to belabor it. But um, Z, you were mentioning earlier how you had a great teach of Atlantis Rising at Dice Tower West. I had a similar yeah. thing happen on the on the cruise. I was lucky enough to have some people ask me if I can teach them Scythe. And it's so cool when people ask you to teach them your favorite game mm-hmm. right. and they right. like it as well and and those are the types of things that that really kind of keep this high in my estimation i know i like the game myself but when i introduce it to other people and they start to see the things that you like too it just it makes it even more special so scythe is still my number one game we'll see what happens in the future but for now it's still at the top of the list i complete mike that's right i almost know what that too but <laughs> My number one game I have played in places that I am ashamed to say I have played it. I own four copies of it. We've shared experiences, dining rooms, (laughs) fine beverages (laughs) that I have. Would you call this would you call this this game your master? Sometimes, but it's Okay, we're done. We are done going down this rabbit hole. 51st state. 51st shades of... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh my God. I apologize to everybody. I brought that too low. This is what happens when you make us do this many videos in a row, Tom. This is what you get. Insanity. 51st state master set <laughs> is my number one. Uh, it was my number one last year. My top 10 moved around a little bit, but it largely stayed the same. I, I still think it's a fantastic game. There's another expansion coming out for it. Yes. Can't wait for that. It's just, it gives me a lot of those things I tend to enjoy resource gathering and then spending it for something cards with powers, building up a table with stuff you can manipulate. And, you know, I'm going to pump whatever into this one. And then that gives me victory points theme, of course, right? Post-apocalyptic, uh, crazy people out there doing crazy things. You know, I, I like all that, all those trappings. So it's a pretty close to perfect 
mixture for me. You know, it's a lot of the things I just love. I like 51st State back when it came out in its original edition, but it was kind of a clunky game in many ways. I mean, I loved it sort of, you know, warts and all, but it was kind of a clunky game. Now this one is. All right, you know, so we need to smooth. add this to the catch up Palooza because. Who hasn't have, played it? No, played I've it? only played that played first it. one that you said was super clunky and oh. I didn't like it. Oh, Roy, you'd like oh, well, it too. This is I very similar, it. Tom, to Imperial Settlers, though. Well, I didn't hate that. Do I have to share my copy? Is it my copy that's going to be touched <laughs> I don't by wanna, you? I don't actually want to touch your copy <laughs> after everything that we no. said. No. No. <laughs> I have to use gloves. Oh, but, uh, all right. There we go. <laughs> Done. That's my number one, guys. All right. Thanks for the shout out, Genway. Um, Rotten Jeeves says. 51st LaSive Champions is my favorite game of all time. Got it. All right. People's Choice, a new number one that was called out last year by Mike Delisio. Three games in the top ten for Mr. Stegmaier wow. here. That's Wingspan. Amazing. Gotta say, Man. though, this isn't a huge surprise. With the huge popularity with Wingspan sweeping almost every award in 2020. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, and, you know, I keep going back to, I know it's just one empirical point of that uh, is convention play, but Wingspan, we could not keep it on the shelves. Yes. We could uh, have had five copies of that easily. And it was always out. And there are people out there selling accessories for Wingspan that cost twice as much as the game. <laughs> and people buy them. You go to Etsy and look for things. Wingspan is number one there. There's, yeah. And the two. core retail box is gorgeous as it is out of the box. You know what I mean? And people are still wanting to add stuff to it. Yeah. yeah. All righty, real quick. Let's see. We had a couple more comments here. Uh, this person ran it 51st dates because Z kept talking about it, but his group didn't <laughs> care for it. Uh, Uncle Loy had a great time. Thanks. Folks, real quickly, before we end here, are there any games that we didn't mention that you're surprised and wonder why they're not on anyone's list? Mm. Okay. You know, because mm. you know, I already mentioned one that had fallen off my list. That uh, you know, are there other ones that you thought would be there and are not? Hmm. While you're, I'm waiting for the people to catch up to me in that regard. Don't forget our Kickstarter. We may pass last year's goal in a wow. few hours. That would be fantastic. Wow. That would be crazy. Nice our Kickstarter.com. You can make it happen. We added card holders. Really cool, folks. I yeah. love card holders where you press down a little bit and the card just slides right out. They work fantastic. And um, all right. Oh, here comes the games. Oh, we have stuff happening tomorrow night, too, Tom. Might want to remind people about that, too. Come back. Join us. Me, Roy, and Mike, and maybe more. We'll, we'll be playing some games. We're going to do a marble race just for fun. We're going to play oh, DoorDash, the game, which Mike's going to find out when, so he shows up later. And some card <laughs> games. All right. Let me see. Power Grid. Did no one have that on their list? The people did. People, people did, did, yeah. The people did. Mm -hmm. Power Grid and Concordia are just outside the top 100 for me. I like them both. Yeah. Ooh, Eon Zend. <sighs> I tell you what, Tom, I saw people, a lot of people talking about it in the comments. Uh, so it's a very popular game. It's just not one that appeals to me very much. Uh, it's just not working for me as much. There's so many other deck builders I like better. Yeah, it's very popular, though. I haven't played Dinogenics. Mm. I like. Dinogenics, but I like uh, Dinosaur Island better. Mm -hmm. Oh, my word. I did not realize. Okay, Werewolf. We just talked about this in the studio yesterday. Yeah. As they were giving me grief. They said, Tom, you played Werewolf all year round. How could not be your top 100? <laughs> Here's the thing. I didn't put my top 100 for the same reason I didn't put Wits and Wagers, because I'm not actually playing it. I'm moderating the games, which is fun and entertaining, but it's just not exactly the same experience. I love moderating it, but I would love moderating any party game. I just like doing that. Z and I run party games mm -hmm. every board game breakfast. So, it's just fun yeah. to do. And a question. Is the DM That's a not good playing? Point. That's a very good point about moderating, um, not necessarily play. Is, yeah. So basically what you're saying is the DM in Dungeons & Dragons has never actually played Dungeons & Dragons, right? I'm not saying anything about the DM or Dungeons & Dragons. I said Tom Vassal and Werewolf. Don't extrapolate. It's the same thing. You're still playing werewolf. No. You're running the game. No. Maybe I should have asked this question because 
there's about 600 answers here for people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many games. They're all great. Um, but I will be talking about some of these games in a new series I'll be starting, which I'll talk a little bit more about on Monday. Mm. Meanwhile, we'll say thank you to Greg for your super chat. We'll say thank you to Natalie for making me want her to play La Havre. And mm. it is two words, not one, because it's a proper noun. Okay, I read that too, yeah. Le Havre. Le Havre. Uh, I'm just going to have Z say all my yeah. stuff for me. Le, Le Havre. All righty, <laughs> folks. Well, this has been super exciting. We're glad to do it, but we're also glad to take a break here Friday night. Um, there are still videos that have been posted all week. Check them out. We'll be back live tomorrow. Check out our Kickstarter. There's only 32 yes. hours left. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Kennedy. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm Z Garcia. Have fun on your weekend. <laughs>